This is your master key to a golden future. CDL Manual Section 5 Air Brakes. So this Section 5 contains two parts, the introduction and subsections 5.1 through 5.4. The introduction is very small. It's just essentially one paragraph and here it is. So we'll go over this introduction right now and then we'll start looking at the subsections. So to begin with, introduction. This section tells you about air brakes. If you want to drive a truck or bus with air brakes or pull a trailer with air brakes, you need to read this section. If you want to pull a trailer with air brakes, you also need to read section 6, combination vehicles. Air brakes used Air brakes use compressed air to make the brakes work. Air brakes are good and safe way. I just totally messed this up, um, but I'll continue. Air brakes are a good and safe way of stopping large and heavy vehicles, but air brakes must be well maintained and used properly. Brakes are really three different braking system or systems. The service brake, the parking brake, and the emergency brake. The service brake system applies and releases the brakes when you use the brake pedal during normal driving. The parking brake system applies and releases the parking brake when you use the parking brake control. The emergency brake system uses parts of the service and parking brake systems to stop the vehicle in a braking system failure. The parts of these systems are discussed in greater detail in this section. Okay. Um, so that's what we're going to, we're just going to go over the table of contents for subsections 5.1 through 5.4. So let's take a look at that now. So this is the CDL manual, Section 5, Air Brakes. We've just covered the introduction. And now we're going to go over the names of the subsections 5.1 through 5.4. So subsection 5.1, we have the parts of an air brake system. Section 5.2, dual air brake. 5.3, inspecting air brake systems, and 5.4, using air brakes. So 5.1, the parts of the air brake system, and those break down into, and this is covered in the section, you have the air compressor, the air compressor governor, air storage tanks, notice plural, air tank drain, or drains, air tank drains, and then we have figure 5.1, which is manual draining valve. So essentially a diagram of a manual draining valve. Then we have alcohol evaporator, then the safety valve, and then the brake pedal. To continue, we have foundation brakes. Now under this part, we have several categories, brake drums, shoes, and linings, S-cam brakes. We have figure 5.2, which is brake drum, followed by wedge brake, or wedge brakes, and disc brakes. 
And continuing 5.1, we have supply pressure gauges, application pressure gauge, low air pressure warning, stop light switch, front brake limiting valve, and spring brakes. We also have parking brake controls. And we have under that, we have caution, then modulating control valves, then dual parking control valves. Then we have figure 5.3, which is the tractor protection valve and emergency trailer brake operation. Next we have the anti-lock braking system. This is still under parts of the air brake system. So this is a part of the air brake system. Anti-lock braking system, otherwise known as ABS. We have figure 5.4, the air brake system's component and location. This is for a single circuit system. Then we have the knowledge test for subsection 5.1. Questions 1 through 6. These questions for section 5.1 may be on the exam, so it's well worth looking at them. Next, we go on to 5.2, or that's subsection 5.2 dual air brake which is a very small chapter it's or subsection let's put it like that it's only about a page long followed by subsection 5.3 inspecting air brake systems under that we have during step two engine compartment checks followed by during step five walk around inspection which uh, also covers brake, um, check brake drums or disc, linings and hoses. Continuing with, with subsection 5.3, inspecting air brake systems, we have step seven, final air brake check. And that covers low test pressure warning signal, also, figure 5.5, low air pressure warning devices, followed by check that spring brakes come on automatically, followed by check rate of air pressure buildup, and lastly, we have test air leakage rate. Continuing, we have under... Step seven, final air brake check. We have check air compressor governor cut in and cut out pressures. We have test parking brake and we have test service brakes. Then we have a knowledge test for subsections 5.2 and 5.3. And we're covering questions one through six. These questions for subsections 5.2 and 5.3 may be on the exam. Finally, we have subsection 5.4, using air brakes, which covers normal stops, then braking with anti-lock brakes, then emergency stops, which covers controlled braking, and stab braking, followed by stopping distance. Now here's a formula of kinds, which goes as follows. Perception distance plus reaction distance plus brake lag distance plus braking distance equals total stopping distance. 
Then we have figure 5.6, which shows a full-size tractor trailer. And we have different speeds, different conditions for different speeds, I suppose you'd say. So we have uh, perception distance, uh, reaction distance. This is a breakdown on times for those. Brake lag, braking distance, and what would be the total stopping distance. Okay. To continue, we have brake fading and failure. Then proper braking technique. Then low air pressure. Then parking brakes. We have a safety rule, which we'll go over later. Then we have a law, uh, pardon me, we have knowledge test for subsection 5.4. It's actually should be questions one through seven. And these questions for sec, subsection 5.4 may be on the exam. So this concludes this portion of the study of the table of contents for section five, air brakes of the CDL manual. Now, I recommend that we go over the questions referenced in subsections 5.1 through 5.4. At this time, we will only be going over the questions with no answers. This is so we can train our minds to be on the lookout for the answers which we will find in the study material. Later in subsequent videos, we will be going over the questions with the answers that we have learned. So now that we know what we are doing in this study, let us begin now by going over the questions. Why must air brakes be, or air tanks that is, be drained? Why must air tanks be drained? Hmm, I'll have to be on the lookout for that one. So why must air tanks be drained is our first question. What is a supply pressure gauge used for? Are all vehicles with air brakes required to have a low air pressure warning signal? What are spring brakes? Are front wheel brakes should be good under all conditions. So are front wheel brakes good under all conditions? How do you know if your vehicle is equipped with anti-lock brakes? What is a dual air brake system? What are slack adjusters? How can you check slack adjusters? How can you test the low pressure warning signal? How can you check that the spring brakes come on automatically? What are the maximum leakage rates? Why should you be in a proper gear before starting down a hill? What factors can cause brakes to fade or fail? Is the use of brakes on a long, steep downgrade only a supplement to the braking effect of the engine? Is 
If you are away from your vehicle for only a short time, do you still need to use the parking brake? How often should you drain air tanks? How should you brake when you drive a tractor trailer combination with ABS? If your ABS is not working, do you still have normal brake functions? This concludes this portion of the air brake study questions. Please stay tuned for the following message.